Today, I will be presenting on fat grafting of the upper and lower eyelids and periorbital area with microfractured and non-enzymatic processed fat. Lipogens provided the kits for a portion of this study, however, I am not a paid consultant. In order to treat facial aging, you really need to address three key issues simultaneously. The breakdown of skin integrity and loss of collagen and elasticity, volume loss and fat atrophy, and finally, gravitational sagging, descent, and changing the facial shape. In 1999, as a resident at USC, I learned about the Coleman fat grafting. I saw the importance of volume replacement that's needed in facial rejuvenation and have been doing facial fat grafting along with endoscopic facelift for the last 15 years. This is a 52-year-old woman who has had a 150-pound weight loss. Look at the sagging in her face and her neck. This is a result after addressing all three layers of the face with lifting, filling, and resurfacing of the skin. This is a 48-year-old patient who had performed a ponytail lift and fat grafting about 10 years ago. We were both happy with the result at the time. However, looking back, her eyes still look old because they were untreated. I was afraid to graft the upper eyelids due to the risk of globe injury, blindness, unpredictability, oil cysts, granulomas, and lumpiness. These are some examples of complications that fat grafting to the eyelids can cause. Periorbital fat grafting is challenging because it requires a rapid cannula movement around the eyes that Sydney Coleman makes it look so easy, but it's actually really, really hard to perform. If you move too slowly, you may deposit too large of a bolus. The size of the fat graft is also a factor. Large parcel of the fat appears to be more noticeable under the skin. Grafts with fibrous particles can transiently clog the cannula and cause inadvertent bolus. And finally, once deposited, it is very hard to smooth out with your fingers. So, smaller size grafts seem to be safer for usage around the eye. One strategy is to use a smaller harvesting cannula like the one from Tulip with a 3mm diameter and 1mm side hole. However, with a smaller harvesting port, it is possible that it could be more traumatic to the fat cells and not to mention it would take longer to extract the fat. Lipogems can atraumatically microfracture any parcels of fat harvested by any size cannula into a consistent homogeneous fat graft size between 500 and 800 microns. Laboratory studies by Dr. Bruno Payal showed an abundance of pericytes. These precursor cells are maintained in their stem cell niche, which we are learning its importance in the role of stem cell signaling. This is a lipogen system. The lipoaspirate is loaded into this chamber. It is filtered by a 400 micron filter on entrance through the blue cap side. Lipogen states that the ball bearing activates the stem cells. I think that the constant agitation by the ball bearings causes some gross separation of fat cells away from its collective tissue. A saline flow system continuously washes and cleans the fat, and the blood and oil is drained out by gravity into a collection bag. Once the fat is washed and cleaned, it is pushed through a 200 micron filter on the great cap side and collected into a 10 cc syringe. Lipogen protocol lets it sit for about five minutes for the fat to separate from the water. Excess saline is then drained and the lipogen is ready to be transferred. The graft size is between 500 and 800 microns. My protocol adds an extra step in which I centrifuge the lipogens for an additional three minutes at 3000 RPM. Between May 2014 and October 2015, we performed an IRB-approved study on 48 consecutive patients evaluating the safety of lipogens for grafting around the periorbital area. The average age of the patients was 54 years old, two of which were male patients. 65% of the patients had simultaneous facelifting. The average volume of lipogens were about 1.6 cc to the brows, 1.3 cc to the upper eyelids, 1.8 to 2 cc for the lower eyelids, and about 1.2 for the lateral orbit. Only the periorbital areas received lipogens. The rest of the face received fat harvested from larger cannulas with 3 mm side port. Patients were either seen in person in our office or interviewed by phone for those who were out of town or international. The mean follow-up was 9.4 months. Majority of the patients were longer than six months. There were no indurations or infections, no serious complications or globe injury. Bruising and swelling were minimal. Most importantly, the grass remained smooth without lumpiness or surface irregularities. 
This video shows that you can be very precise and slow with your cannular movement when placing the fat right next to the orbit. Because of the particle size, lipogym can be smoothed out very easily underneath the orbicularis oculi muscle, so the eyelid contour is very smooth. But you still have to be very skilled and careful in avoiding a bolus around the eyes. Smaller size graft do not save you from poor grafting technique. These are just several clinical results. This is a 73-year-old female who is one and a half years post-op. She's had severe facial wasting, and we used a total of 141 cc's of fat for her face. We used 2 to 2.5 cc's of lipogems in her brows, 2 to 3 cc's in her upper eyelids, and 2 in the lower eyelids, and 1 in the lateral orbit. You can see that she has significant improvement of her volume, especially in the upper eyelids. It remained very smooth and stable over the past year. This patient is 9 months out from her ponytail facelift, fat grafting around the eyes and around the face. She is very happy with the smooth correction of her upper eyelid contour. In summary, we had no lumpiness or surface irregularities for all 48 consecutive patients. Lipogen seems to distribute very well under the dermis. It contains abundance of pericytes and regenerative cells. It appears to have longevity, but we still need long-term volume retention studies. The cost of the kit is the factor when dealing with aesthetic patients. You need to harvest three to four times the lipoaspirate, and I prefer to concentrate these lipogems for structural use. And finally, pre-washing is helpful in order to reduce the amount of saline wash needed.